All right, so uh, as Chris mentioned, I am a principal solution consultant. I've been with Relkio for right at about six years now. Uh, been in the data management space for, gosh, uh, over two decades now, uh, working at companies like SAP, Oracle, Informatica, always focusing on the data management technologies, but always with a mind to solving business challenges, making the business operate more efficiently and being able to use data as an asset. So today we're gonna to be talking about data governance and how the Relteo solution can really help drive data governance programs within your organization. So I wanted to start off by really just talking about and defining what data governance is and what it really means that we're looking to target here. So data governance is often referred to as the ability to have people, processes and information technology working together to provide consistent and properly handling of enterprise data. And this is really important when you look at the consistency. Uh, one of the management gurus of our time, uh, Mr. Peter Drucker once said that you can't manage what you don't measure. And in order to be able to measure things, you have to have consistency. Otherwise the measurements really are just uh, very difficult to correlate and look for opportunities to improve. Things. So what we're gonna talk about today is the ability to provide processes that allow you to start getting some consistency and then once you have that consistency, you can look for ways to improve it and provide better handling of that enterprise. Data. So the people that typically interact with these systems are referred to as data stewards. And data steward is really a role within the organization that's responsible for ensuring the quality and the fit for purpose nature of your company's data assets. And I've worked with a number of companies that come back and they say, well, we don't have data stewards or we wanna get data stewards, but it's new to us. And what I try and remind companies is everybody has data stewards today. The reality is somebody in your organization owns different aspects of data. Everybody knows that if you need this type of data, you go to Bob. If you need a different type of data, you go to Susan. And if neither one of them are available, you send an email and you wait for one of them to get back to you because they're really the gurus who know that data. And those are really your data stewards, the people that understand the data, the people that manage that data, and those processes exist, but they're just, they're in the hearts and minds of those employees. So data governance and data governance processes, data stewards, it's something the organizations are doing today. You just often lack that consistency. You lack that ability to make sure that things aren't falling through the cracks. And that's where really Relteo comes in is to allow you to have those processes where you're the, really the goals of the data steward is to act, protect and collaborate on that central repository of those data assets within your organization. So Relkio was really focused on being able to uh, you know, give you the ability to manage that data. So a lot of companies have traditionally tried to provide governance and data quality processes in those operational spokes, those systems around the organization. And the idea there is to try and be proactive, to catch those processes during data entry in those various different operational systems. And the challenges where a lot of companies fall short is that there's just, there's disparate technology, there's competing priorities. The, the ability to do it in one system doesn't equate to the ability to do it in another system. And you often end up with these deficiencies. So while it's, it's better to be proactive than reactive, it's better to be reactive than to not react at all. So by providing Relteo as a consolidated source to be able to bring that data together and put those processes in a central place that affects all the systems throughout your organization, uh, while you know, there's definitely ways that we'll talk about how Relteo can be much more proactive and search before create and interacting with those systems as part of the onboarding process, you know, the first step for many organizations is really just to get that central repository and give your users a place where they can start managing that data. So as most of you are aware, Relto is a 100% cloud-based solution. We're running in the cloud. So organizations often uh, you know, wanna make sure that that data is protected, it is secure. And that's something that Relto really focuses on is being able to provide that central repository of data that consumes data from all your applications, whether they're applications like Salesforce that are cloud native, or maybe you've got some legacy SAP or Oracle or Microsoft applications that are on premise. So it's really about providing that consolidated place where you can start building out those consistent processes to manage and, and improve the quality of that data. 
but you know the the really underlying factor is really to protect that data as an asset, to grow it, to improve it, to provide consistency that you can measure and look to provide better quality and opportunities to use that data more effectively. So where that comes down to now is really the focus of this session. So what my goal is for today is really to review the capabilities within the Rollfield platform, which help our customers achieve consistency in the management of their data, providing them opportunities to discover and respond to quality opportunities within those data assets, and really to recognize that data is an asset. It's something that is, has value to your organization. When the quality of that asset diminishes, you, you, it can cost organizations money. When the quality of that data asset improves, it can save you money. It can provide more efficiency, more opportunities for growth. And uh, so really recognizing that it's an asset and looking at the ways in which Relkio has capabilities that can help uh, drive those processes. So we'll drill into those. Uh, the first we'll talk about is security. So really being able to protect this house is about having that central repository of data, but ensuring that it's secure. So every Relteo customer lives in their own tenant. Your data is segmented and separate from any other customer's data. Data is always encrypted in motion. It's always encrypted at rest. Uh, authentication and access to the system is controlled by your organization, your single sign-on, your LDAP, your Active Directory, you control the users. If you deprovision the user in your system, they're automatically going to be deprovisioned in Relteo because we're utilizing your services for that authentication process. Within Relteo, based upon that user authentication, it's going to indicate the groups and roles that they participate in. And based upon those groups and roles, within Relteo, you allocate permissions of the allowable actions that they can perform on the various entities, attributes, and relationships within the data. Relti also supports the ability to create data filters as part of your security profile, which allows you to have alternate permissions on different subsets of data. So the combination of these uh, capabilities give you very fine grained granular roles that can manage different aspects of the data. And this becomes very important as you start consolidating data from more and more systems, being able to control who has access to that data, protecting that data, making sure that it's secure and accessible are all parts of the core relative platform and deriving these processes that are gonna manage and extend this data. Uh, when you look at consistency, there's things out there like Six Sigma. Six Sigma was developed uh, by Motorola a number of years ago to really improve the quality of their manufacturing processes. And, and while data is not you know, necessarily a physical asset, it is an asset that has quality that can be measured, that needs to be improved. So many of the concepts of Six Sigma can absolutely be applied to your data management processes. So when you start looking at what your organization is doing today and how you're managing data, you can start thinking about some of those processes around defining, measuring, analyzing, improving, and really putting the controls in place that help you uh, kind of put together those puzzle pieces and bring together that full view of that data asset so that you can really take advantage of the information that you have available to you that's often fragmented across operational systems. So to start with, the Relteo provides a full business process management workflow engine. So out of the box, we provide potential match reviews, we provide data change requests, and we provide the ability to recommend a profile for deletion. And this becomes really important when you start looking at a government regulations like GDPR, or California Consumer Protection Act, and the right to be forgotten, uh, being able to control how that data is seen and the ability to purge that data from the system. Relteo has out of the box workflows to help drive those processes. But we also provide the ability for you to customize and extend those workflows, to develop new workflows from scratch to meet some onboarding business need that you may have. Relteo's workflow engine provides uh, out-of-the-box integration with your mail system. So notifications are automatically going to show up on their inbox and on their mobile device, however they receive email from your organization. But Relteo also provides a dedicated inbox user interface that is mobile-friendly, so they can access it through a browser, they can access it on their mobile device, on their tablet, 
it's touch sensitive, it's going to allow them to really see and interact with those workflows. And we'll see an example right here. Uh, just to summarize this process here, when you start looking at uh, building out custom workflows, the ability, it really starts with understanding your business requirements. What is that process that you have that, you know, today in many cases, it starts with Bob, it goes to Susan, uh, changes take place. But the, the challenge a lot of organizations have today is things sometimes fall through the cracks. Data gets undone. If Bob's on vacation, uh, he gets emails, but he got 300 emails while he was out and something didn't get done or he forwarded it to somebody else and they were out and it just takes time and things get backlogged or missed. So by using the Wealthier Workflow Designer to take your ideal business processes, define them out into flows that are role-based so that users can participate and their appropriate time in that workflow process. But where necessary, you can reassign tasks, you can have tasks automatically designate, re-notify users. So it really goes down to providing that consistency around those data management processes. Uh, one other capability Relphia provides is where you don't have necessarily a consistent process where you wanna build out a workflow, Relphia supports ad hoc collaboration. So while you're in the software, if you simply point the mouse to any of the attributes in the system, any relationship uh, within the profile header on a match, you're gonna get this little green plus that's gonna pop up and you can click on that and you can simply do a plus username, uh, direct a message directly to a user and they're gonna receive an email notification with a link to bring them back to this record. That information is gonna be saved and stored as part of a collaborative comment with that note. So Relphia provides that ability to have, you know, structured workflow processes that are going to be continuous and consistent, but we also provide the ability to do these ad hoc ways of interacting. So let's take a look at that and see what some of those workflow processes might be. So here I am in the Relphio inbox. So we've got, again, if you're inside the Relphio software, you have the ability to uh, simply from the screen, you have your, uh, your menu bar up here and you simply have this link to the inbox that'll allow you to come up and uh, access the Relto inbox. You can bookmark this and save it on your mobile device, uh, however you wanna get to it on a, a frequent basis, but you have these tasks. And as I click on these tasks, it's gonna provide me information about that task. If I click on a different task, I'll see those details. I have the ability directly within this inbox interface to be able to reassign that task to one of my colleagues, or I can simply take action directly from here. If I see that uh, previously the website was uppertest.com2, obviously that's not a valid domain. Somebody's done some research and they said, well, it's actually it's upper-test.com. That looks valid to me. I'm gonna trust that this person's done their job and I'm just gonna approve that. And this data change request is now gonna apply this change to the record. It's gonna generate the appropriate notifications to allow that data to be syndicated back to the various different operational systems that are consuming and subscribing that data. Uh, looking at that workflow approval process here, I can see that we've got an onboarding of a new record. I can see some details here, but before I take action, maybe I wanna click on that link and drill into that profile. So right from that inbox, it's gonna take me directly into the Relphio interface. I can see the attributes of that data. I can see that workflow task itself. I can see any other characteristics of this record that I may need to, uh, to review or access in order to make my decision. And then I can simply come in here and I can say, well, you know, I wanna review it. I wanna make a comment. Uh, this is completely configurable while you're defining out your, your process. You can say, I want to reject it, or I want to send it back to somebody for more information, or you can simply uh, attach a comment that says, uh, looks good to me. I can associate that comment, and then I can uh, say that my review is complete, and I can pass it on from the US reviewer step into the next step, which is going to be an SC approval process. And this has been assigned to somebody different. So because it's not currently assigned to me, I do have the ability to come in here and comment and add additional pieces of information, but only this user is going to have the ability now to approve and react unless it's uh, reassigned to another person. 
So let's stop for a second, see if anybody's got any questions around the uh, the workflow processes or any of the governance topics that we talked about. So Dan, there is one question. Um, and by the way, please add your questions to the chat if you have any, but uh, is there an additional cost to use the workflow capabilities if we're not using them today? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So the, the answer is definitely no, there's no cost for using this. You have the ability to leverage these out of the box workflows using your, your standard license agreement. You have the ability to go into the Reltio workflow designer, creating new workflows and deploying those uh, and having additional members of your, your organization interacting with that data. And there's no additional cost. It's part of the core Reltio. Yeah, and, and Dan, is there um, additional documentation um, on the docs.reltio.com that can go with this webinar? I've been asked that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So what I'd like to propose is for, you know, there'll be various topics like that throughout the rest of this webinar session around some of the various different capabilities. I'd love to suggest that we open up different threads in the community and we can kind of talk about that and I can respond to those threads oh, with well, I got um, details and links into the documentation, any training, and then certainly respond to any questions you might have with follow yeah. It, it's a good idea. I get good idea, Dan. Sorry. Um, one other question: Can we have DCRs for relations? Yes, uh, we do support data change requests on the relationships themselves. So in the in the early days, that wasn't supported, but it is available. So, quick comment or question: This workflow is mostly designed for users having access to Reltio. So, how easily can it be integrated within like other tools like Salesforce or something like that, where changes on attributes uh, could come from source systems outside of Reltio. So yeah, so Reltio is, when we developed the Reltio platform going all the way back to 2011, we used a methodology called API first. And what that means is that every bit of functionality within Reltio, every microservice was first developed as an API, a programmatic interface in order to perform that task. And all of the interfaces that you're seeing here to interact with the workflow, to interact with the changes, is really just the Reltio governance interface choreographing those APIs. So in cases where you've got a change request that's initiating outside of Reltio and you wanted to trigger this review process within the Reltio interface, it's just a matter of invoking those APIs and choreographing it. We absolutely have customers, uh, especially in the life science industry where it's highly regulated, where they're making changes in other systems and those systems don't necessarily support the ability to have that review and governance process they have those changes come into Reltio where they can review, approve, document the review, and then uh, synchronize that change to various systems. Thanks, Dan. That's all the questions for now. All right, great. So let's move back in. And our next topic is going to be around kind of recognizing the similarities in profiles. So one of the, the fun sayings out there is if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. But of course, not all ducks are the same. So Reltio provides you the ability to have uh, matching logic that can identify when two records, whether those records represent individuals, organizations, products, services, employees, any type of data that you want to bring into Reltio, you can define matching logic that will allow you to discover correlations and similarities within those records. So the first and the most common is just your traditional rules-based match approach. So being able to combine deterministic and probabilistic logic, setting thresholds of scores that would define when two records should automatically be correlated and merged together, uh, when two records need to have some human review process, and uh, before there's any consolidation there, that's all part of our traditional rules-based engine. Reltio also provides a, an add-on product called Match IQ which you leverage is machine learning. So it'll go in there and analyze your data, look for correlations between attributes that can potentially identify records as having similarity. And then there's a review and training process where your business user can go in there and accept or reject any of the proposed changes by the Relative Match IQ solution. And then as they interact with that system and participate in that training process, the machine learns and adjusts its correlations on those various different attributes to make better and better recommendations. And then you can still define a threshold of, of matching within that uh, uh, trained model 
to identify when two records should be automatically correlated and consolidated together and when they're still want to have some level of review of those records. So this is important to recognize that uh, you often have multiple profiles, both within a single system like SAP or Salesforce, but you're often going to have records that exist across systems. So there's a, a record in your SAP financials, but you're using Oracle for supply chain and Salesforce for CRM. So you've got three different records with three different identifiers that all represent the same organization. And Relteo can come in and help you find the correlation and link those records together so that you get the best version of that information, but so you can also monitor and facilitate cross-system operational processes. Uh, using those two different techniques there within the, uh, the traditional match rules and the match IQ machine learning, Relteo supports the ability to use both of those in unison. So you can have uh, deployed match rules that are gonna identify similarities as well as the machine learning model. So different records may be recommended based upon different characteristics of each of those techniques and they can be used uh, at the same time. Relto also provides an external match service. This provides the ability for your business users to take data that exists outside of Relteo and effectively bump it up against the Relteo repository and find out which of those records have potential correlations, either using the traditional rules-based approach, using the machine learning approach, but never having to actually load that data into the system. So if you're just looking to see uh, of this data, how many of these customers have I seen before, um, you have the ability to do that through a business interface. Relteo also supports the ability to uh, utilize this matching logic to make recommendations on which records can be related together to create relationships. So let's take a look in the system case. So here, uh, this is um, go over here. So in finding records that have similarities, uh, while looking at a single profile, Relteo can provide a facet that you're, you're seeing, not seeing it on the screen here. So that represents that this organization, Pepsi here, does not have a uh, potential match within the system. But within the search interfaces, you can identify records by searching on their metadata. I'm looking for organizations in which the match will fuzzy match on name and close proximity is met. And you can see that I've got a number of records that are coming back as potential matches here. And if I drill into one of these records, here you'll see that same screen that we just saw with the Pepsi record, but now the potential matches facet is active on the screen. So I can, from directly from the screen, I can review what logic did Relteo use to identify that these records are potentially the same. I can take action directly from the screen, or I can go in and say, well, I, I need to do a little bit more research. Tell me more. And we can go into the Relteo side-by-side -side match review screen. I can see the existing record here at the top. I can see the record at the bottom. I can hide and show if there's additional fields that I want to see that I want to do a comparison on. We have access to the full breadth of information. If I want to see these records in more of a side-by-side -side review process, I can bring them up here and I can see that data laid out in a horizontal fashion instead of a vertical fashion. Um, I also have the ability to kind of uh, blow that up into a full screen to scroll through and eventually make the decision. Yep, these records look pretty close. They've got the same address, the same name. They've even got the same phone number. So I'm going to allow Relteo to consolidate these records together. And as they start getting consolidated, Relteo is going to track that lineage here. So you see that the record that came in from the, uh, the Relteo interface combined with that ERP record uh, is all brought together. And I get a, a single look and feel. I can see in my uh, history view up here, do a quick refresh, the screen was cached there. Uh, you can see the, uh, the dotted line here that's showing me that other profile that was created has now been manually reviewed by Dan Gage based upon the match logic that was identified here that these records were identified and brought together to provide this consolidated view of the Chevy Chase medicines. 
Uh, are there any questions around kind of uh, matching and the match IQ and kind of the broader capabilities that we have? Dan, I'm going to test your knowledge, my friend. Uh, lots of good questions here. Um, so let's get ready. First question, can email notifications be set up so a person gets an email to know what they have a workflow task to address to address if they are not logged into Reltio? Yes, so the, the standard workflow engine is automatically going to send an email notification to a user for any workflow task that's assigned. To them. So if they're participating only in step two of a workflow, uh, when the workflow is still in step one, they would not get notification. But once that person in the uh, step one interacted with it and approved it, it moved into their, their inbox, they would absolutely receive an email notification. Great. And by the way, you just made this look so easy. Um, another question, is Match IQ available for external matching? Uh, it is, absolutely. That's available today. Great. Uh, that was an easy answer. Um, are there any limits to uh, the number of match rules uh, that somebody can have? No, that's definitely something that is a, a real di differentiator between Reltio and a lot of traditional systems. Uh, because they were built on legacy technology, they often had performance limitations and the ability to scale. They would execute rules in what was called a waterfall fashion, where you would have to rank the rules and it would only execute the first rule. And if it failed, then it would move on to the second. And if it failed, then it would move on to the third. But if that third one presents a potential match, it would never execute any of the additional rules. And that was just because of the legacy technology and the performance limitations. Because Reltio is a native SaaS application running in multi-node clusters with no single point of failure, you can have large numbers of match rules and we're gonna execute every single match rule every single time, providing you the full feedback and, and insight into why the, uh, the match IQ rule or the existing rule, whether it's probabilistic or deterministic, has uh, made some recommendation around whether or not these records represent the same uh, organization or product. Okay, thanks, Dan. And, and we got a few more. Um, is there an extra licensing cost for Match IQ enablement? Yeah, so Match IQ does require a, a, a small upcharge, and that would be uh, uh, determined by your customer success team. So they can interact with you and find out uh, based upon your existing profile counts it would impact the, uh, the cost. So there is a small cost, but we can certainly work with you. Yeah, and if you don't know, and I assume most of you know who your customer success manager is, but if you don't, just send me a note, chris.detzel at relteal.com. Um, another question, what is uh, required to get Match IQ started and efficient? So, you know, volume of data, volume of match decisions taken already, et cetera. Sure, sure. So in developing these models, as part of your standard Relteal license agreement, you're gonna get a dev test and production environment. So you can take the data from your uh, uh, production environment, you can bring it down into your test environment and start building out that model. So typically we recommend around 10,000 records if they're available to bring it in and to allow that correlation process to start and to uh, give you the ability. So if I jump into my console here, you can see that there's a match IQ right here. So once that's uh, available and enabled for your system, all the data that comes into your Reltio process, or you can bring a, a subset of the data to start developing those models and going through that training process. So from a, a business user perspective, there's no technology. You don't have to uh, set up any imports, exports. It's just a matter of getting that uh, feature activated. Reltio provides all the integration to, uh, uh, so it's pretty much just a wizard process where you walk through, initiate a model, and then start uh, approving and rejecting the proposed matches. Great, and several more questions here. Um, so Angie asks, on external match, previously console returned Realtio URI only, uh, which was not user-friendly for non-Realtio user. I have not uh, reviewed recently, uh, is more data returned now, so user can you know see more data, so like name, address, et cetera. So currently we use the API Java, uh, slash Java program to run external match as we are able to customize fields return. Does it make sense? Yeah, correct. So I believe there have been some improvements there where any field that is participating in one of the match rules that has determined a similarity will be included in the return. So if it's matching two records by uh, some fuzziness on the name, by any fuzziness or exact on the, the address or the phone number, 
those fields will be returned back to allow you to assess the, uh, the recommendation. Okay, and Angie, I hope that answers. If not, you know, uh, please let me know. Kardik asks, uh, can we give explicit uh, winner to URI through the UI, which we merge, when we merge records? So yeah, when merging two records together, the Reltio entity ID is going to, the surviving entity ID is primarily gonna be controlled by the oldest entity ID created by Reltio. So you really should consider the, the Reltio entity ID as a universal identifier that is managed and controlled by Reltio. We have our own processes and algorithms for blending those numbers together, uh, those identifiers. But for customers that want to have their own control over how uh, a universal identifier is, is brought together, you do have the ability to define, you can see here, uh, we've got an auto-generated ID, and it's just, in this case, it's the word Reltio ID underscore and a sequence number. But by defining your own sequence identifiers here, it can be just uh, like this, a pattern that's defined, it can be a GUID. Uh, by using your own attribute and your own generated identifier, you can control through survivorship uh, how those numbers are blended together. So here you can see it's defaulting to the oldest value, but you would have the ability to, uh, to change that and even for a data steward to potentially override it using your uh, standard stewarding capabilities. Great, Dan. Two more questions and one comment. I'm just going to make this comment. Uh, it looks like uh, they put it in a direct message, so I'm just going to say it. It's definitely possible to customize the list of attributes returned by the external match. So recently we had a story to implement that. So just a comment from okay. one. Uh, and then another question, can the source system of the records show on the potential match screen be like visible straight in the UI without going to each detailed record involved in the potential match? Good question. So yes. So uh, if I go back into my uh, search results here, and I just step through this next record. Uh, when I've got a potential match here on the uh, the match review screen, and I'm currently looking at this is the uh, the new match review screen, and and actually uh, this screen is technically considered early adopter. It does not include the uh, the lineage, but if I go into my preferences here, and I go back to my original match screen. You'll see at the bottom here, it's telling me uh, these two records came from Salesforce, and this is the identifier that was provided with each of those systems. So uh, this functionality is definitely available today through the standard match screen, and then that enhanced match screen that I was using earlier uh, is uh, currently in, like I said, early adopter mode, and we'll be adding this additional uh, lineage information in the next release. Great. So I'd like to know more on Match IQ. You know, is it possible to understand that two addresses are the same or two names are the same if one contains LTD and the other says limited? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Match IQ does give you the ability to leverage uh, word equivalency lists that are being managed outside of the Match IQ product. And in the, uh, the correlations that will provide you uh, during the training process uh, details on why records have been recommended as far as the correlation attributes. So that is something that is there. Yeah, and by the way, I didn't really wanna know, Georgie did, so. <laughs> um, for now, that's all the questions, Dan, thanks. Great okay. job. All right, so let's keep uh, charging forward here. So uh, data which is fit for purpose is really a key part. So Reltio provides a number of different techniques to improve and measure the quality of the data. So uh, most customers are already using the out-of-the-box cleansers around address, phone, and email. So we refer to these as contextual data quality because Reltio knows the expected patterns for these pieces of information. And we're going to cleanse and standardize that address. We're going to uh, reformat and structure that phone number and let you know if it's got the right number of digits based upon the country code. And then of course, everybody knows what an email should look like, but the system really needs to do that validation and make sure that it's uh, uh, ad bulk adhering to those standards around what an email should look like. But Reltio also provides an ad hoc data quality framework. We call it the data validation framework, which gives each customer the ability to define rules, which will automatically inspect and flag data, which does not adhere 
to those rules. And this can be done on any attribute. It gives you the ability to use all your standard comparisons as well as regular expressions in that rule uh, process. And today it's, it's going to uh, de define a warning message and associate it with that profile so that you can uh, uh, be aware of any uh, violations within that record. They're searchable uh, and it enables users to quickly find and remediate data quality issues. You'll we'll see an example of that uh, right here. So uh, on the left-hand side, we see a view of the Relteo console screen. So inside the data modeler, when you're looking at a specific entity type, you have this new section here called the validation functions, which allows you to build out these rules. And here you can see the, the rule on itself on the right. Uh, and this is a simple rule, just they want to make sure that the age of the customer is greater than or equal to 21. So they simply selected the attribute age is less than 21, and that's going to designate a violation of this rule. And again, you can, you can pair these together with AND and OR logic using all your standard comparators to uh, validate the, the quality and fitness of those data sets. Uh, here's another example here where we're looking at the, uh, on the left-hand side, we're looking at the tax identifier. And again, you see five nines here, and it's recognizing that this tax ID does not have the appropriate number of digits. And on the right side here, it's saying the tax ID is simply missing. So we recognize that it's just not there. So not only does it not adhere, it just doesn't, it's not there at all. We also have an additional rule here that says that the uh, Dun & Bradstreet identifier needs to exist for addresses that are in the United States. So because this address has a country of the United States, it's gonna expect that Dun's number to be there. But if this address was in Canada or France, uh, this rule would not necessarily Uh, Relteo also provides an important capability we refer to as reference data management. And this gives you the ability to standardize values as they're coming into the system. So a common one, of course, is just your country codes and being able to understand that the way that a country might be represented in various different operational systems could possibly vary. You may have a, a legacy lookup table where countries are being stored as two-digit codes or three-digit codes or Maybe the entire country is always spelled out. And as you bring that data into Relpio and you want to pour matching and merging and reporting on that data, it's important to be able to standardize it to uh, consistent values. And the Relpio reference data management provides you that ability to map those incoming values into that standardized list of values. We also support localization on that. So the ability to uh, translate those values and have those translated values available to users of the Relteo system that are accessing it in an alternate language. We also support workflow approval of changes to those reference data lists, activity logs, publication, and so forth. So let's take a look at the, some of those capabilities now. So starting off on my Relview dashboard here, you can see I, I get all the uh, different widgets and reports and bubble charts that are showing me the different distributions of the data. So here on the left-hand side, I've got my data quality. It's showing me that the vast majority of these addresses have been verified by the Relview cleanser. And here I've got these ad hoc verifications. So that DUNS number is missing for some of these US customers. That tax ID is, uh, is invalid. And by simply clicking, on one of these bubbles, it will take me into the Relteo search interface and it will pre-populate the search filter to automatically limit it to just the records that have triggered that violation. So here you can see organizations where the tax ID has a validation. And lo and behold, right here on the right side of the screen, I can see tax ID has an incorrect number of digits and you see it's one, two, three. If I look at another record, I can see that the, uh, the tax ID uh, wherever it is in here, it's violating that rule as well. And then I've got some other information for the tax ID of 51221. So that's obviously invalid as well. So if I click and drill into this record, you can see I've got a number of different violations here. But if I edit this record and I steward this, and I just know that a tax ID needs to be nine digits. So if I put those in here, you can see that that rule down here at the bottom of the screen that says tax ID is incorrect number of digits. When I steward and make that change, 
regardless of whether that change is made directly through the RELTU interface, whether it's made in a contributing system, whenever there's a change within the RELTU uh, data, it's gonna reevaluate those data rules and you'll see that that tax ID is missing, is no longer uh, uh, flagged on this record. And if I go back to my search screen here, you'll see that that gauge test Paris is no longer on my list of records that are triggering that uh, need for remediation. And likewise, this works on uh, you know, the addresses, the phone numbers, the emails, and any ad hoc rule that you define for your system. So Chris, let me uh, open it up to questions and see if anybody's yep. got- comments. We do, we have a few. Um, it's a very lively bunch, Dan. So uh, right. can we use multiple instance of the same cleanser for an entity type? Uh, you can. So Relteo supports a concept called chaining. So through the chaining process, you can define uh, the, the cleanser to occur in, in different ways. And in that chaining process, you can decide um, should the process proceed. So an example of that is with the address. So in some cases, customers are feeding addresses into Relteo and they have all the address fields concatenated together and they would map that into a field called the address input field where Relteo can expect all the entire address to be represented in one field. And the cleanser would take that one field and it would send it to the, uh, the address cleansing service as a single field expecting it to be parsed and broken out individually. Uh, if that is successful, it would not go on to, uh, to chain cleanse the next step. But if for some reason that was unsuccessful, it can move on to a, an alternate mapping of the, uh, the address cleanser where maybe it looks into the address line one field, the city, the zip, to uh, uh, have an alternate mapping or alternate parameters within that address. That can also be used with things like CAS certification. So if you're trying to CAS certify your addresses to be cleansed, uh, you can utilize that service first. And if for some reason it's, it's unsuccessful, you can fall back on a, an alternate cleansing. Great, thanks. And by the way, they keep coming in. So the next question, uh, is there a way to export from RDM1 the wrong referential values used in the different source systems and two, the list of records linked to wrong uh, referential values? This should be very helpful to fix those source systems. So yeah, definitely. So within the Relteo search interface, uh, not only can you search on any of the characteristics of a record, you can search on the metadata of that record as well. So here you can see I'm searching on organizations and in my uh, fields here, I can type RDM and you see records with RDM transcoding errors. And I don't know if we have any in here, but if I check that and they say uh, transcoding errors is yes, it's gonna come back and you see, yeah, I've actually got a large number of records here where uh, some piece of information was not properly transcoded when it was loaded into the system. So uh, now this, uh, this trans reporting of transcoding errors does require a uh, configuration setting. And this is definitely a topic that I would encourage you to uh, post in the community. We can get back to you with uh, some details on the documentation there to uh, guide you in making sure that you're enabling this feature properly to report those transcoded errors. Uh, they need to be reported and indexed. And then likewise, within the reference data management module, which you can access through your, your Relteo menu system here, you have the ability to see uh, in your classes, and then it'll take a second here and it should uh, pop up and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one and see. Yeah, on the right-hand side, you can see I've got a number two here. It's telling me that there's two workflows. But if there were unmapped values, values that had been loaded in through the MDM system, that had not been mapped to one of your canonical values, they would appear here on your unmapped value. So uh, I don't think that there is an out of the box uh, report that will report just the unmapped values, but it, it is definitely available through the APIs that you could have a custom report to extract out any of the, uh, the reference data sets that have unmapped values. So here you see I have none, but. Uh, if there were some here, you can see that the, in the area region, it's now come back and reported that we have three. And if we go up into that unmapped section, I can see I have NALAC, APAC, and uh, over here on the left, I do have APAC. So it's simply a matter of just dragging and dropping, and I do need to be in edit mode first. 
and I can just drag and drop APAC to APAC and it goes away from my unmapped values. So uh, definitely I think that would be a, a custom report to get those notifications, but it's, it's definitely available and visible directly through the UI and uh, the mapping process can be done through a drag and drop. Eric. Thanks, Dan. And uh, Angie seems excited here. She said, I'm very interested in RDM. It's great news. So today our ETL uses an Oracle table to transform our data. We then need to need a lookup table in RailTO to show the verbiage for the codes to that value. I, I am hopeful that through RDM, uh, we can set up the transformation in RDM and the ETL can also access this for data loads. Is that true is the question. And uh, currently if we have a new code translation, it requires IT ticket to add uh, business values to an Oracle table. If business could add code uh, and ETL can access the RDM table, it will allow for a better flow. Although these reference data is sl is slow changing, they do exist. Absolutely, they do, uh, and that's part of why we provide the uh, the workflow interface here to allow you to uh, govern and manage the changes in the Relpio system. Now, you will need to talk to your Relpio customer success manager to uh, check your license entitlements. So for any data coming in from Oracle or SAP or any of your contributing systems to define the, uh, the list of values and mapping them into Relpio, that's definitely gonna be supported by your existing license. But if you're going to manage and govern your reference data sets in Relpio and then publish them back out to Oracle, which is absolutely possible, we do have a, an activity log and we are gonna generate uh, business events on these changes that can trigger when it's necessary to publish that data back to one of those operational systems. Uh, but that may be require a, uh, an extension to your license. And it, it's pretty inexpensive, but there may be a need to, to evaluate. Makes sense. So Loka has some more questions here, or at least one more. Can you explain the DQ, IQ score and ranking? So if that's part of the scope of today, of course, if not, we can leave it for later. Yeah. So you see here in the header of the record, you get a, a DQ IQ and a RELTIO rank. And RELTIO effectively has some algorithms within our console. Uh, and if I go back to um, console screen, all right, here on the right. Um, uh, within that console, you'll see that you have the, uh, the data quality section here. So the Relteo rank is, uh, we have our own algorithm there. We're looking at the number of attributes that are populated uh, within a, a record. So if, if your average record has 30 attributes populated and you have another record that has only 18 attributes populated, then it's gonna rank lower than that other record. Whereas uh, records that are more, common, uh, more populated have more relationships will uh, receive a higher ranking score. On that uh, DQ IQ score, you'll see for the various different entity types, if you go into the configuration screen here, you have the ability to uh, effectively choose the weighting of each of the attributes. Now, this is definitely an area where Relteo is looking to kind of enhance and expand our capabilities. So you can see again by organization, I can see the completeness of the record and it's allowing me to weight the various different attributes that participate. So we're in the process of kind of enhancing and expanding this capability to give customers even more control over how these scores are, are uh, designed and defined. Uh, so if this is something you're interested in deploying, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to your customer success team or your sales uh, account executive and uh, request some follow-up information from LTO that we can work with product management and kind of understand your needs and whether the uh, existing functionality is good for you or whether that uh, next release might be a better fit. Yeah, and, and we have an ideation portal uh, that we kind of recommend going to if, if it's not there and you want something there. So another, it says few questions, I, WRT means right maybe to data quality, DQ capabilities. Can we do uniqueness, integrity and business rules based checks where we can join data across entities? And maybe I'll ask, Maybe you answer that question, and I'll ask the other few. 
Yeah, so uh, we, we have a, uh, an upcoming feature that's going to be coming out uh, in our next release this year, which is going to be more of a profiling dashboard that will be accessible in the console that will allow you to see the uniqueness of fields, the most common values, uh, and the, the frequency in which different attributes are populated. It will leverage some uh, machine learning to look at patterns of data. So it's going to be effectively a, a detailed profiling module but it's going to be uh, focused on data that is within the Relfield repository. So it's not intended to, to go out and look in your Oracle or SQL databases, but to, to provide profiling uh, of the, the data that's in Relfield. So there's definitely an enhancement path there with new functionality. And again, contact your customer success team and we can uh, follow up and get you more details on that. Great. Um, can we create uh, assign weightage to DQ rules? So uh, today, the, the data validation rules are effectively, uh, uh, I guess they're kind of pass fail. So there's not necessarily a weighting to the, the way that they're developed today, but that's something that uh, definitely is interesting. And I would encourage you to uh, maybe utilize our idea portal to make that recommendation. And that's something that we may incorporate into a, a future release. And so, and created DQ scores, which can show overall score of a period. So like showing a trend. So right now we don't have that. It sounds like if that's something you want, you know, potentially put that in the ideation portal. Correct. So we do have a, an additional add-on product that I wasn't going to talk about too much today. That's called Relfio Data Science. Hmm. And that does give you the ability to do some time series analysis of data. But uh, that is an add-on product called Relfio Data Science. And uh, if you want to publish a, a question in the community, we can certainly get you some follow-up information on that. But uh, by default, the, uh, the data quality within Relative, while we do log the history of what a record looked like at any point in time, whether or not it had validations at that point in time, um, uh, time series analysis of data is not done directly through the Relative. Okay, um, so we only have four minutes left and I have one more question or so. Um, and uh, the question is, when filtering in the search view on RDM unmapped value in the results, can I see for each records what is the actual RDM unmapped value issue, or it can it only give the list of records unmapped value but without highlighting exactly? So similar to kind of you know that DQ rule, which would tell you the region value is not mapped to the standard uh, referential. Yeah, I think the default behavior here is just it's going to give you the list of records that have transcoding errors, but you would need to look at the record itself. So uh, something like that could definitely be facilitated through a custom report. So um, uh, one of the things that I was going to touch on, and I, we're towards the end of our time here, is Reltio does have uh, uh, connectors with Google BigQuery for Reltio Analytics, as well as Snowflake. And uh, these transcoding errors would be considered part of the metadata of this record, that if you were to have uh, that GBQ uh, relative analytics connector for GBQ or Snowflake, that data would be available where you could report on it in, uh, in gran more granular detail. Um, so there is no other questions. By the way, this will be recorded and posted out to the community. I put a link directly I know there's a lot of questions on here, so it's hard to find, but I'll put a link in the uh, uh, um, here uh, and you should be able to see all of the recordings that I have. Um, so by the way, please put in the chat too, whether it's directly to me or outside, you know, are these valuable to you? Are they helpful? Uh, if there's other things that you wanna see, um, you know, let me know because I will try to make whatever it is that you're looking for happen and, and and get you know more webinars like this. So we have two minutes, Dan, did you want to? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of introduce, so Chris, I'll make these slides available to you and you can publish them in the community. Yep. So just so people are aware of what else is in here is just talking about uh, the search capabilities within Relfio, the ability to do bulk updating and tagging of records, uh, the ability to take that data and publish it uh, either through the Relfio export console or through the business event framework. Uh, being able to utilize the queues within uh, Amazon, Google, or Azure to have those uh, data change events published to the, the technology of your preference, 
I talked a little bit about the uh, the Google Big Query and Snowflake connectors. Uh, the relative data science leverages a Spark environment, and then uh, this was just kind of a summary slide here around some of the things we talked about today. So, um, you know, working with Relative was always a journey. I'm learning new things every day, and I certainly encourage you to uh, to follow up through the community or through your customer success manager to get more details to help govern your data more efficiently. All right, Dan. Well, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Lots of interest, a uh, lot of uh, questions. So everyone, thank you for coming. Thank you for your questions. Um, and uh, please post here quickly if, if you enjoyed the webinar. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to stay here for a minute or two. Dan, nice work. Um, uh, it, it's it's really great to see you know so many so much interest in some of these webinars. So people keep coming. So. There must be interest. <laughs> you too, Georgia. You too, Mark. Take care. Glad you think so, Stephen. Mr. Singleton. Dan's the man. Yeah, a very inform informative session. Uh, great session. You know, so uh, very knowledgeable, very good. So nice work, Dan. Thanks, guys. I keep uh, telling people that, uh, you know, would love for others, you know, like customers and partners to, to share some. I haven't um, had anybody say, yeah, I'll do it yet, but that's gonna happen in September. I've got to get more of that. I think it'd be fun for folks, so. All right, well, I'm out. Thanks everyone and goodbye. Thanks.